Over the weekend, Austin O'Connor and Shane Griffith both dropped bouts that nobody expected to happen, unless you were Peyton Robb, who beat Austin O'Connor in a duel meet and then took David Carr to overtime in a tournament. Wow, that was a crazy weekend for the number 16 seed, and don't expect to see him at number 16 for too long after that big win. He was dropping down, Austin O'Connor bumping up. They met at 157 pounds, of course, because that's where they're both wrestling this year. And in the duel meet, Peyton Robb took O'Connor down in the second period, then iced the match with a second takedown in the third period. He won that bout 5-2 to two and helping Nebraska win 27-6. This win, as well as the other bout that I'm about to talk about, earned him Fanco Wrestler of the Week, which I'm going to be continuing on an ongoing basis. In the match against David Carr, which was just crazy at the Dactronics Open, he scored an early takedown in another one in the third. He was up 5-2, to two, but you can't count out David Carr, who was the national champion last year at 157 pounds, ended up coming back in winning in sudden victory with a takedown over Peyton Robb, but wow, he's somebody to watch out for. And I also mentioned Shane Griffith, who lost over the weekend and wasn't really expecting that to happen. He lost to Julian Ramirez of Cornell. Now, Ramirez was up early on Griffith, 3-2, to two, and one of the biggest controversies over the weekend, and trust me, there were a few controversies that we're going to get into, happened in this match at the end of the period when Shane Griffith got a takedown on the edge of the mat, but didn't quite get the takedown, didn't get the two, and there was a very controversial call, although Ramirez did control most of the match and seemed to be the better wrestler during this match. So there were 30-plus upsets over the weekend. What were they? Let's stop stalling and start talking wrestling. What's going on, wrestling fans? My name's Josiah, and welcome to Fanco Wrestling, your source for college wrestling news and discussion. And as I said, 30-plus upsets over the weekend according to Flow Wrestling. Absolutely unbelievable. And we're going to start off at the top here. Of course, we start started off with the NCAA champions, but the other big upset that happened on Friday night was Anthony Cassiope getting pinned by Jack Del Garbino of Princeton in the first period. Now, basically, he rolled through Cassiope, and you see, as you see in this clip, and stuck him in the first period. Then at the end of it, <laughs> This just cracked me up. He had the audacity to come over and shush the Iowa Hawkeye fans. I mean, they were losing so bad to the Iowa Hawkeyes, and he still came out and shushed Carter to Hawkeye Arena. That was just hilarious to me. But what a, what a crazy win there. And, and like, how are you going to rank that as you're looking at, like, Intermatter Flow Wrestling rankings? And there's quite an interesting rankings debacle that we'll get into. Like, I don't know what's going to happen at a couple of these weights. But Master Giovanni over Pat McKee. Master Giovanni of Oklahoma State was a big upset over number five, Pat McGee. He beat him decision nine to four. And honestly, I mean, he was just dominating that whole match. Josh Heil of Campbell defeated Zach Sherman over the weekend as well in a two to one sudden victory bout, which came to a illegal hold at the end of it where Josh Heil ended up getting that bonus or that point in sudden victory. It's a sh it sucks when that happens that to, you know to win a match on that you'd rather win it on a takedown or some other call rather than like a stalling or or an illegal point, but it was, you know, a win's a win and Sherman was also upset over the weekend by Ridge Lovett of Nebraska who got a win over him in the duel. Malik Heinzelman and Sam Latona was an incredible match. Heinzelman, number 14, ended up defeating Sam Latona, number 12, by a score of 5-2. to two. And I'll tell you what, we're going to be talking about Ohio State and Virginia Tech in just a second here. But wow, that was a quite the match to start out the dual meet with Ohio State and Virginia Tech. Kizon Clark of UNC was also on fire this weekend. And honestly, just this season, he beat number 5 Chad Red in last week's dual meet. And he's 5-0 on the season. He has another great win over Jordan Cater of Ohio State. And let's see if he keeps this rolling at 141 pounds. I mean, it seems like a couple of these guys who are dropping weights, changing weights, it's working out very well for them. And a couple other upsets with Pitt and, Ohio and Lehigh, actually, was very unexpected. Because Brian Meyer, number 30 ranked wrestler in the country, defeated Jake Wenzel, national finalist, by a score of 4-3. to three. He got an early takedown, another on the edge, and just was able to beat Jake Wenzel. And another upset that happened in that duel meet was Malik Hines, who had a pin over Mickey Philippi. It was a defensive pin, actually, at the end of the third period, and Philippi was down, ended up coming, getting a takedown, taking down Hines right near the end. I mean, there were like 30 seconds left in the match, and took him over to his back, and Philippi's shoulder blades were, I mean, he was flat, right? He took him back, 
flat on the mat. Good call by the ref. Defensive pin. I mean, he was just shocked by it. And I mean, everybody's shocked by a defensive pin. But what a what a crazy turn of events there that nobody really expected. And when you talk about Lehigh and Pitt, right? Like, what it. We're going to talk about some dual meets. Lehigh and Pitt, 26 to 9, Lehigh beat Pitt. Was very unexpected. I thought it was going to be a tighter duel. I mean, I expected Pitt to get the victory, but yikes, I was not expecting that like massacre. And now Campbell has a win over Lehigh. Lee has a win over Pitt. That was a very similar situation a couple of years ago where there was like a triangle. And I think we're going to see that continuing until we really get those rankings of who are the top 25 teams. Ohio State, did you watch that match over the weekend? The Ohio State and Virginia Tech match was incredible. 17-13 to was the final score. Ohio State got the win over Virginia Tech. And that was my, one of my favorite matches over the weekend for sure. I predicted Virginia Tech to get the victory. So it was kind of an upset Duel. I had the score 16 to 15 Virginia Tech, but don't doubt the Big Ten. Do not doubt the Big Ten when it comes to Ohio State. And there were upsets from both sides the entire night. Um, I mean, from 125 pounds, as I mentioned, Latona and Heinzelman. Heinzelman got the victory all the way up to the heavyweight bout is what it came down to. So, and I said, I said, whoever won 125 pounds would win the duel. That's pretty much what happened. Heinzelman earned the win over Latona 5-2. to two. Sammy Sasso in Bryce Andonian. That was one of the, honestly, one of the best matches of the night just because of how scrambly those two guys are. Sasso was looking for that cradle everywhere. Bryce Andonian was not backing down from the fight. Uh, and Sasso ended up getting the win 10-7 to seven. in the end. Makai Lewis and Ethan Smith, I got a note there in second, but a good win for Makai over a top 10 ranked Smith. And I'll tell you what, 174 pounds has to be one of the top, I mean, it's, it's got to be one of the toughest weights in the country. I, I mean, just Makai and Ethan Smith right there, what what a stunning match. And it came down to heavyweight. It was your typical heavyweight match, Orndorff and Traxler. Nothing crazy, nothing exciting. Orndorff ended up winning 3-2 to two and, and clinched the victory for Ohio State. And there was beef all weekend, starting with Makai and Ethan Smith. And I tweeted out, like, what the heck did Ethan Smith say to Makai to get him so mad? Because they were riled up in, in during the match. You're like, the coaches that kind of, like, Calm down a little bit. And he was so psyched at the end of that match. And sorry for that kind of video overlay there. But uh, it, what a crazy match right there. And the, later on that same night, Oklahoma and Arizona State were kind of getting into it. And I wasn't expecting that kind of... I didn't think there was that big of like a rivalry there between Big 12 and Pac-12. But they were starting to fight from... I think it was your Corey Teamers match where there was some kind of shoving, some excitement, some over-celebrating at the end. I believe it was Teamers match. And then at the in the heavyweight, when Schultz was pushing his opponent out of bounds, like all the way off the mat. Now, Arizona State ended up winning 23-13, to but yikes, what uh, what's some beef there? I mean, didn't believe... I mean, and you talk about controversy. Iowa and Princeton. Iowa and Princeton controversy. Now, listen, Iowa just dominated Princeton. I mean, I, t I talked about the heavyweights, you know, <laughs> even though I, Princeton ended up getting that pin at the end, Iowa dominated 32 to 12. They beat them up pretty bad, but the controversy didn't come at heavyweight. The controversy came at 125 pounds between Spencer Lee and Pat Glory. Now, everybody kind of knew that Spencer Lee wasn't going to be wrestling this weekend. It was kind of, it came out prematurely with the lineups that Spencer Lee wasn't wrestling at 125. And, I kind of expect that from Spencer Lee this year. We know his knees aren't the best that they should be. I mean, apparently he didn't even get work done on them, which I'm shocked, but he didn't. There was a f So we knew that he was going to not wrestle Princeton. Well, what did Princeton decide to do? They decided to not weigh in Pat Glory. And there's some things going on, and Stalemates actually broke this down on their YouTube channel, but did Pat Glory not make weight? Did he not weigh in? He didn't weigh in, but we don't know if he just wasn't going to make weight. Or Apparently, this is what Coach Ayers had to say. He said, there's a lot of misinformation out there. To be clear, we prepared for one guy, especially. He wasn't going to weigh in, so we didn't weigh in. End of story. Now, is that a duck? That's my question. Is it a duck from Pat Glory? I mean, not really. Is it a duck from Spencer? I wouldn't call it a duck. I just don't think he's... I, I, I don't really think it's... Spencer Lee is going to wrestle anyone anywhere. I don't think it's a duck. I, I'll leave it up to you. I'd like to hear that. Iowa ended up taking the forfeit at 125, which was strange that Princeton didn't even have a backup plan. Odd to me, but I'd like to hear your take on that whole situation and controversy. And there was a little bit more controversy in Cornell 
and Stanford. Wow. Cornell made a glorious return to the mat this weekend, beat Stanford 30-9. to Now, Vito and Yanni, we now officially know their weights. 133 is what Vito's going. 149 is what Yanni's going. You see him wrestling his first match in over 900 days since the 2019 NCAA Championships right here in the clip to the uh, left. But Wow. I mean, to be honest, I think they're smart moves, right? I think it's a very smart move for Vito to go 133, not only for the team, but also look at the competition. I mean, 133 is like tough, and I think it's there are a couple guys who could win a title. 125, yeah, good luck beating Spencer Lee. Then you look at 141, where Yanni was wrestling, and you have Jaden Ironman, Sebastian Rivera, Nick Lee. I mean, the list goes on and on at 141. Why wrestle 141 when you can bump up and wrestle 149? Good move for Yanni, in my opinion. But where did the controversy come in with this match uh, that Cornell ended up beating Stanford bad 39? Well, apparently there's some real bad blood between Coach Cole and the Cornell wrestlers. And that's like to be expected a little bit, right? Cole decided to leave Cornell and go and coach Stanford, another team uh, in the conference or another like Ivy League caliber school, Ivy League school. Why leave them? You know, that's kind of a shame that that happened. And, and you see Yanni, who I mean, this was the biggest shock to me after his match, after his win over Avis, he ended up doing the crybaby face to the uh, Stanford bench. I was shocked to see that out of Yanni, honestly. And I know some people liked it. Some people weren't fans of it. But, you know, at the end of the day, Cornell did look really, really good over the weekend. Uh, with freshmen looking good, Cole Hanlevick, Julian Ramirez with that win over Shane Griffith, Chris Folk at 174 is looking amazing. Cornell has shown that they are here to wrestle and they are here to contend for an NCAA championship. Uh, impressive win and wins just by all of those freshmen and by the team. Um, and to be honest, like just for Ramirez, what an incredible win to start out your dual meet season in season as a freshman. I know he had a red shirt year, but like, or gray shirt year, but geez. And then you want to talk about returns to the mat. Gable Stevenson made his return to the collegiate wrestling mat and everybody was excited to see his return. Now, Oklahoma state and Minnesota wrestled, uh, Oklahoma State beat him bad, 23-10. to 10. It started off good at the top for Oklahoma State. Master Giovanni came out, beat All-American Pat McKee. A great win. He continued on through the lineup. Good win for Dayton Fix. A.J. Ferrari came out, and, he, you know, I mean, he's doing his typical flex routine, and that's obviously, like, a lot of entertainment to watch for the fans. But you talk about entertainment. I mean, back-to-back national champions, A.J. Ferrari, then Gable Stevenson. Gable Stevenson comes out. And I think we're going to see this a lot this season, but his opponent from Oklahoma State was just kind of like jumping around, trying to get something on Gable, j- jumping here, jumping there, quick feet, quick feet, and Gable was just like standing up like, come on, man, like, let, let me just beat you. Like, and, and like, granted, like, good, good on Oklahoma State for trying to find a way to beat Gable, but good luck to anybody who's going to do it. And I think we're going to see a lot of this from Gable this season, guys trying to find some way to beat the Olympic champ to say they beat the Olympic champ. But like I said, good luck. Uh, Gable ended up taking him down so many times, majored him 20-7. to seven. I mean, yeah, it was just a major to start the season. It wasn't a fall, but like, he looked good. He looked good. And the one thing I did like is off the mat, these guys, Gable, Dayton Fix, A.G. Ferrari, there's autograph and kids' posters and hats. They're taking pictures with some of the other you know, fans and family. And I do like to see that off the mat as well. You know, you see the entertainment off the mat, but good people off the mat. You know, so really good stuff from those guys. What a crazy weekend of upsets. What was your favorite upset over the weekend? Because I don't even know if I know what mine is.